And good evening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome back to another beautiful game of competitive Overwatch. I'm your friendly color caster this time, joined here by Bite Me, the wonderful and epic play by play caster. I will be doing color once again, but it's a pleasure to be here. I am Chowder Trambino. As always, back again into the fray. How are you doing, Bite Me? I'm doing great, and these two teams are, they're looking really spicy at least. They, they, I think it's going to do, do some major damage tonight. Alrighty, glad to hear it. And while we're warming up here, I have to ask you, I believe the first map is Oasis. What can you tell us about it? Well, you know, Oasis is a, a nice... I, I think all the maps on Oasis actually have, uh, honestly, great far potential. But coming into this, um, we've seen Choco Bros and how they act, and, and Holly as well. I don't think either team are going to really run far. And if it is, you're going to probably be seeing Cause and Danny on the Faras for this map. Although... To be honest, um, just expect Choco Bros to come out with some weird comps as they are they they are in this, you know, revolution of sports not to really compete and dominate the you know other teams, but they're they're mostly here to have fun while Holly is here to really show that they're top game. Alrighty, glad to hear it. And uh, based on the history of these two teams, what do you think is gonna take it tonight? Um Choco Bros. I mean, even though they're here to have fun, they were one of the better teams of, you know, Nevermore back in the um, OG realm. They did leave for a while, but they have shown that even though they inherited, you know, not the best score coming into, you know, this season, that they still have the potential, even though, you know, they might not take things seriously to still whoop some can. Well, we'll just have to see bite me. But otherwise, I will say this. I am excited. I've never seen these teams play before. And we will just be getting underway here. Casters, we are ready. Bite me. Take it away. Okay, so going into Oasis, you know, this is a point where you normally see a lot of far. And this is this is going to be, be the map with the jump pad. And I feel it definitely has a huge amount of high ground potential. You see a lot of teams coming for the right. Jump up, jump up high. And expect to see i'd say orisa hog um for the yoink and oinks i'd say if Ka is gonna run a fara cause is gonna run a far it's going to be right here but king's outlaw we've seen both these teams play we're gonna be seeing a, a probably a mccree from the side of you know choco bros but it, it's all dictated on what these teams play and as we hit the zero mark on assembling teams we're going to be seeing, and ooh, I'm loving the look of that Childish, look at that Sombra. How do you think Kings is going to use the Sombra to tear apart, you know, uh, Holly? So I would like to point out that, uh, unfortunately, I was getting excited. We did see a swap from the Sombra, oh. but fantastic flanker, if I do say so myself. The EMPs, when they are coordinated, are fantastic and explosive. Here we are going to be coming into the first fight. I was incorrect. We do see Frostbite on the far instead, but this is honestly an amazing far map, so expect to see him to do some real damage right now. Frostbite coming in, doing some minor trash damage, just trying to build up that justice from above, getting them sweet, sweet, easy claps. We do see an immediate move, and the match... And we're going to get a restart. restart. Don't worry, ladies and gentlemen. Professional competitive scene here. Hang tight for just a moment. Oh, it's it's library now or university. Okay. That could absolutely affect the outcome of the game. I'm excited all the same. Honestly, I think this is um, you know, I would feel that you normally know, see a, a tad bit more sombra on this map, but Lucio does quite a bit as well as well as um, some more enclosed map. So you know what, childish, I would love to see Doom in this map. I think Doom would honestly look amazing. What do you think? So Doomfist. He can be powerful on this map, but the unfortunate thing is specifically on library, you've got that giant gaping hole in the middle. So he really isn't going to be too effective for protecting the point, but he can be scary in the back lines. Mm -hmm. Are we going to be seeing a May? Um, King's Allo still has yet to pick, although, you know, we do see him on the scene. He does need to pick support if they want to stick to the 2 2 comp, although they could totally not stick to the 2 2 comp. And I still be extremely hyped for this we do see a may coming on the side of frostbite so look up for those amazing walls and i think that 
Okay, everything's fine. <laughs> there was a little bit of confusion in chat. They thought they were everything was going to restart. But look at the speed coming in the side from Choco Bros right now. They're going to get the point way faster, and that's going to dictate how this match is going. But some pre-map confusion causes them to not use that Lucio to their fullest. The Yorgen Oink comes out, but the Maywall stops everything, and now you're going to be seeing the damage come in. Watch as these two teams try to destroy the shield for another. It's a huge amount of shield damage right here, but the Yorgen Oink comes out. Meg gets taken up, but the crowd's going to allow her to live with the immortality fields and let her live for the next fight all that these teams need to focus on is doing the shield damage and choco bros is having a little bit of a hard time doing that in fact they're the ones who are going to get yoked and the time with the uh, with the dragons coming in 30 seconds into the actual game and now it's not looking so hot also already coming out damage is going in hot and the yoink and oinks are looking absolutely fabulous this immortality shield dropping up so much damage, able to absorb so much, and both teams are sort of having a, what I like to call it, a tier tower battle, battle, battle here. Not really able to get a foothold, but with popcorn falling down, it's gonna look a little bit easier for Holly right now, getting the first point. Now, I would like to point out the two Orisas. We've got a little bit of a contrast playstyle here. We've got one that's really just settled on placing that shield as many times as possible, keeping it refreshed. But we are seeing a more aggressive playstyle from Risky here. They're coming right back onto the point. And Risky already has Bongo, so he can pop it if he wants to. But it says that he's going to fortify, not get Yoink the Oink. But Danny's going to pop up the aggressive ult. Gets hook, cancels it, and that's not looking so well. Even though they have Frostbite and Deco, their main DPS is out of the fight. And you could expect Frostbite and Deco to come back into the fight a second. Now, with Doctor going to get hooked in, there's aggressive playing coming from the side of Choco Bros. Looking like it has some effect on the morale of Holly, but it just isn't working. They are able to move them off point, but this contest is too big. 50%, even though they do need that one last tick left, and these bongos are coming out. The music is playing, but the damage season coming up too much as the May all gets eaten up by Diva. It's looking a little bit risky. Seems like Holly is going to have no choice but then to lose this fight, especially with this justice coming in 60%. What a huge. Hold. So Choco Bros took back the point, but the ult economy obviously for Halley is a lot stronger, so they can take that back whenever they please, really. It's just a matter of keeping that oppressive crowd control out of the way, and Ch Choco Bros definitely struggling with that. They don't really have any answer for that May. Yeah, with the dragons coming in, they're just trying to initiate the fight somehow using the dragon as a cleave, but then he's in the back. Look at, he's positioning himself, looking for that big damage, and with this immortality field coming in, it's gonna allow him to do quite a bit. Hitting 75%, it's gonna do, you know, you're just waiting here, even with the bat will up, just to see how much damage Jenny can do in such a short period of time. 90% alt, I'd say keep your eye on Danny, because this is when he sort of dictates the fight right now. You know, where he is matters. Now, I do notice that the Pharah is actually not being attacked too heavily here. We don't have any hit scan really for uh, the Halley team here. So, really, that barrage is going to come in handy if they can find it with that uh, full of lessons to really just hammer them from land and the air. Mm -hmm. And with Wiz falling down on this next fight, you can. It just. Togo Bros is having such a hard time pushing in, even with 70%, it's been a while. Danny has, you know, that Beyblade, so he's he just waiting to let it rip. You can see how defensive he's playing, he's waiting for, you know, instead of playing aggressive, he's waiting for Choco Bros to play aggressive, but he's actually gonna decide to teleport into the backline right now, and this is gonna be huge! He's waiting for everyone to get there, he's waiting for Bap to make a mistake right now. The Immortality Field gets popped, but it's out of position, it's not with the rest of the team. Dan's gonna come in, just is gonna come as well, and both alts are gonna be popped, which is a little bit of a risky choice, but with 90, 95%, I don't think it's gonna matter, as we are gonna be seeing Halley take University. I think we can definitely call that high risk, high reward. I mean, we did see the Barrage and the Death Blossom come down at the same time. They really wanted to be triple sure that they had no chance of getting back onto that point, which fortunately it paid off. Yeah, when you pop those kinds of ults, you need to make sure everything hits. You know, that Ace's hook on the Danny scared me a little because if Ace had, um, if they'd taken out Danny and gotten him you know, taking him out, had focused popcorn, and I, I seriously think that that was extremely hard, like like you had pointed out early, early in the match. Um, that was extremely hard because of popcorn right now. And if they don't answer popcorn, it's going to be hard, but seems like, you know, 
They've learned from their lesson. Now they're going to try to counter Popcorn with Frostbite, and this should be a, a little bit, hopefully, for Holly, a little bit, you know, easier to take this point or, you know, just like not feel the burden that they've been feeling for so long. And you can tell that they're going for that high ground comp. They have Danny on Soulja. They have, you know, Funk Doctor uh, always on Orisa, like you said, playing an extremely aggressive Orisa. Just look how he's not really paying attention to his wall, not really paying attention to, you know, doing, you know, the whole defense thing, but uh, playing an, uh, an extremely aggressive, you know, hoping to get those sweet Yoink and Oinks, which is honestly the only reason why you really play Orisa nowadays. But as the first fight commenced, the Immortality Field is up and no one's really paying it that much mind. These, you know, Choco Bros seems to be hoping to focus on getting these ultimates. The ultimates is, is, is what they want for this fight. They're hoping to win at, at the dry push and just to outskill them because they that's what they, exactly what they just did. Now we did see the capture from Choco Bros, but now they have a hit scan and a Fera. So I'm wondering if the pharmacy is gonna pay off in their favor. They're gonna try and play a little bit more aggressively from the high ground, but that soldier could be a definite threat if that tactical visor is used correctly. Yeah, Danny playing on high ground is definitely putting a, a stick in Holly's, you know, day. They are definitely not enjoying Danny, especially with the amount of damage he was doing on high ground, as well as well as popcorn. It just seems to be a little bit too much. Wisp also is having a little bit of trouble taking out popcorn. You saw last fight, he was, you know, left and right, but he just couldn't get his, you know, crosshair in, in the center of popcorn's head. But with this next thing, we are going to see the fireworks popping out. Popcorn bringing down the Justice. Wisp trying to do whatever they possibly can. They pop Pap Wall, but no one was there to capitalize on it. The overall synergy I'm noticing is they're a little too trigger happy with their ultimates here on behalf of Hallie. But it isn't necessarily a bad thing as long as they follow up. There's really no follow up here. Yeah, it sort of seems like a little bit iffy. And we did see Cause pop um shield barrier must have just been a bad finger which is really sad to see we're gonna be seeing bottom on the side of funk doctor bringing this damage they're just they just want to stop holly in their tracks right now as the first fight comes in they try to you know call whoever they possibly can they want to stop the fight right here and the damage is coming out risky's gonna fall down frosty's gonna fall risk frostbite is going to be the next one to fall down and they have nuclear bomb they do have break it down so the damage is gonna get negated they have like a huge zoning all right now so the these pushes coming on 90% look like they're not going to connect, and it's going to be really hard for Holly to get a foothold in this climbing wall. And Choker Bros really playing aggressive. They are just about keeping them off the point here. I do hear a self-destruct popping out. Doesn't really get anything done. Sound barrier going off as well, and attack visor. But uh, the overtime timer has been activated. There is only two members of their team trying to contest right now. Self-destruct coming out. But no value, unfortunately, and uh, Choker Bros really having no trouble defending. It looks like they're going to take this map. Yeah, um, definitely have to, just looking back on that game, the reason why Choker Bros was able to come up so hard, like, they were able to dominate that map simply because of that high ground control in the first fight. And that was, like, the reason why they were able to win that first fight without popping any alts and gathering so much alt potential and right here just look at this justice you know he gets it perfectly look how the diva protects you know their fara what great synergy what 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 great team play and with a 1-0 lead we're gonna see if the team here can maintain their powerful first map nice play style just how in I these like. next few rounds i guess we're gonna go ahead and take a break here ladies and gentlemen but uh stay here we will be right back
traveling to Dorado. And welcome back here, ladies and gentlemen. We're currently on map two with the Choco Bros having a 1-0 lead over the team Halley. I'm joined here with play-by-play -play caster Bite Me, and I'm your faithful color caster, Chato Trambino. Welcome back, Bite Me. Great to have you here. Great to be here. And, you know, looking at this first map, it is unexpected. Dorado, we never see teams pick Dorado. It's always Route 66 or the other one, which shall remain unnamed until it gets chosen, which, let's be honest, it's going to get chosen, like, you know, in the next, like, match anyways. Now, I do have to ask you, based on Chocobro's performance last map, do you think they can take this as quickly and efficiently as they did last time? You know, I honestly have to say that Dorado is a weird point at that. We see um, it's not as bad as Rialto, but it definitely... Yeah, it's, it, I don't think any map can be as bad as Rialto, you know, frankly speaking, but we do see a change in how you know there might be a change in how we see pally play and there might be a change in how we see you know choco bros play it's these players like to switch it up through you know each map although i don't think i saw any substitutions come out i don't think i'm seeing any bashing right now but we do see the widow we see double snipers which is a good comp on dorado you just have to be good enough to make it work so let's see how good they are and to start off to get a little bit, you know, heart pounding with popcorn, you know, coming down to a few HP, but with a double sniper comp, you can never be too sure if that's gonna be a headshot or not. And popcorn is, he has his eyes on Wisp over here. You can see popcorn knows exactly where Wisp is, and he's being, you know, generally careful not to engage him, but he's going to engage him right now, taking down Wisp with the help of King's Outlaw, and that's gonna be some major sights down on the side of Holly. You really don't want to be the one with this like without the sniper and now that wisp is no longer with his teams look how popcorn's playing he's playing so close to spawn even though the fight's happening on this corner wisp just doesn't care he's his only job right now is to sort of try to screw up popcorn screw up the snipers but going back to this main fight over here it's getting cleaned up finished up danny's getting a lot of kills cake pop is sort of being the mop right now and they're going to just you know popcorn's going to take out cause and it's going to be a, just a clean mop up now the first point doesn't seem to be too difficult for hallie they did get right under the top of that arch but since chocobos has taken it back it's going to be a lot harder to get back onto that point now yeah you know, at, at least at least they're not playing Bastion right now. Oh, but Popcorn's gonna get straight up yoinked and oinked right there. Ace taking out Popcorn, and this is gonna make this this push ten times easier without that backline harassment that they need. Eat. Rato's taking out Funk Doctor, and now it's looking even easier. Even though Funk Doctor is going to be, you know, res right now, it allows them to play this uh, just a tad a centimeter more aggressive. Meaning that they that they can have that sweet sweet positioning, which will help help them out in the long run. Both teams popping bongos. Seems like we do see Holly's bongo is a little bit open as well as Choco Bros, but now he's gonna have it. Danny's gonna get a 2k right there, 3k trying to mop it up, and they're gonna be able to pull it back even with Popcorn dying early in that fight. Amazing synergy from the side of Choco Bros right there. And with the teams going head to head here in this these team fights, it really does seem Choco Bros. They're well organized, definitely. I'm seeing the synergies. You know, I don't get to see a lot of Ash gameplay, but when I do, it's always fun to see the placements of those wonderful dynamites. Bob coming in right when they need to. It, it's really a thing of beauty. And we're gonna come back right here. You know, honestly, like you said, dynamites and going to halt in the dynamite is so beautiful. It's so good. And popcorns that take advantage of this, going in for the dynamite opponents, taking Wisp out, but sadly going to be taken out by Raw Toast with his Im in immense full snaps. But just look at Danny. He's able to just destroy, clicking those heads like it's absolutely nothing with that mercy. And I think Danny is the biggest, you know, stake in the wall right now that's stopping Pally from even pushing. Now, they've taken back the point again. They've only got 60 seconds on the clock. Hallie really having trouble pushing onto this point again. I would probably, if I were them, think about switching off the snipers, maybe, just after you pop the dragon strike here. I don't think it's working out for them too well. Yeah, Rotos is looking to cleave right now with his dragons. 
that's normally like you either want to cleave or you want to do a massive amount of damage you know get like the uh get the tanks out but there there comes the um dragon alt right there look at that massive cleave cake pop coming in so getting a 3k completely stopping it with the nuke right there danny gonna come in and that's just a uh, nothing's gonna happen off that what a great play from cake pop excellent efficient ult usage and it it, it it is definitely warranted to say they know what they're doing definitely they they are most likely coordinating very effectively they know exactly when to use those ultimates and they just denied a huge push that was big oh but Wiz taking out danny right now if any moment the moment this is it with danny down that main dps pillar is not going to come back they're going to play extremely aggressive with this zen yada trans right now we do see the dragon come in with the nano popcorn looking to pop some pinatas right now and he's gonna get three of them Looking for some more candy right now, but he's not going to be able to find it as they're hitting down on overtime. Their only last hope is Raw Toast, but Raw Toast just can't handle the flame right now. Getting a little bit burnt, and that is going to be a one-point hold for Choco Bros. Now, having seen them just play even just this map and the previous map, they have worked very well together, and I am extremely impressed. Uh, they will be obviously attacking now but I'm eager to see what Hallie has in their back pocket to try and hold them and keep them from pushing up that hill. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I really want Hallie to run Bastion right now. I want us that point and click adventure, but sadly, I just don't think Bastion really works too good on defenses. And no matter how much I want to see it, I don't think the double sniper comp really worked out for them. I'd like to see them stray away from it. Um, is there any comps that you would like to see Halley run, you know, from, you know, I know you don't really know these teams, but is there anything that you really just want to see from Halley to try to stop Danny from, you know, running the field? I want them to be a little bit more intuitive with their team comps. And when I say that, I mean, you know, if something isn't working out, you may want to consider switching off before you can't anymore and the alt economy just falls apart that, that's the biggest thing you need some big plays you need to make space you need to try and force them off the point long enough so you can get some distance 100 percent. yes exactly you know and that's what i see a lot of teams do you know i you know i think one of the best um views for this is when you're playing bastion and you can't you die the first time, you have to switch off immediately. I know a lot of people who was like, I'm so close to all, it doesn't really matter. You have to switch off while you still can, but we are gonna be seeing this first point come into play. Seems like we see somewhat same comps. Danny's gonna be on Tracer, looking for that backline harassment. And I'm gonna be focusing on Danny for the most of this fight, even though we're gonna see Popcorn be doing a lot of damage well, just because of how good Danny's backline harassment I've seen has been in the past. And with Danny coming up on the left, the Hall folks are just trying to come in right now. It just doesn't seem like anything's really connecting for either team. But Danny in the background trying to do some massive damage right now. Popping in and out of the fro with the tanks already down in the front line. All that Danny needs to do is just distract this back line. Even if they have an immortality field, I just don't think it's going to work out. Danny gets hooked. Oh, it barely escapes the grasp of Wisp. Only to be brought back in. Wrung out like a wet tablecloth and thrown outside. Seems like Holly is doing a great job. Even though they just got a huge anti right there with a bath while they seem to be holding fine. The, you know, honestly, Choco Bros is having a little bit of a hard time pushing this. As like, you normally see Choco Bros play really aggressive. I say, as we see Popcorn just hop right in there with Ponyo right now, tearing up the back line. It seems like this is when it's going to be happening right now. Danny playing a little bit less aggressive than he normally does, a little bit wary of Wisp's play right now. This immortality field is coming up in such opportune times. It's denying Danny any possibility of doing any physical amount of damage popcorn taking out and now they're feeling the burn Hallie able to perfectly defend this with the amazing immortality piece. ironically they are just within sneezing distance of taking the point and the map all they need to do is pull off one well coordinated push and they could definitely do this and again Hallie with the ult economy they have the better ult economy but they need to be able to follow up when they use the ultimates and they're gonna pop you know the bap while immediately hoping the sweet sweet crit strikes but you really need to watch out popcorn he has this justice and he's looking for it 
You can see how he's playing. He's going up and down. Danny, look at Prism. Oh, but he gets hooked by Wiz. Only for Wiz to be halted, allowing Danny to take out Deco. And Deco was the thing that was holding the team together. Allowing Popcorn to get nailed and do a lot of damage. No matter what you do, they're popping these struggles right now. You can see that these are totally panic alts and they don't know what to do right now. Without Deco and the Immortality Field, they are fish sitting in a barrel. And I swear, Turbo Bros has a huge shotgun. It's up to the base right now. They're popping all the alts. This sneezing distance is coming in meter by meter. Meaning that we are going to be seeing Turbo Bros win this Dorado map, and it is absolutely huge. They went for Deco, and they just absolutely demolished it. Okay, we're seeing the DMAC here, and that's gonna be the last person holding the point, and the Joker Bros have taken map two. That was insane. We saw Deco fall, and once Deco fell, it was just like dominoes. And today's play the game, brought to you by Popcorn as Genji. What do we got here? You know, you know what? Dragon Strike is ready. Dragon Blade, here we go. He's gonna go for the single here. Can he pick up the double? He's got the double in his back pocket. How about the triple for your money? He slices and dices and picking up three fantastic kills. Well done. Sort of like that smell that you get when you um pop cop pop popcorn in the office. Everyone else can smell that you just got that 3k. But they don't have it. You know, you have the 3k, but they can smell it. You know, it's, it's that sense of pride. Now, we are going to take another break here, ladies and gentlemen, but stay tuned. We will be right back for map three in this epic Overwatch competitive match. Stay tuned.
And we'll be jumping right back into things, folks. Welcome back. I'm your friendly neighborhood color caster, Chandler Shrambino. And today, we are currently in map three, with Joker Bros having a 2-0 lead over Hallie. How you doing, Bite Me? Welcome I'm, back. I'm doing great, and this 2-0 lead is starting, you know, it came up as like a little sore on Hallie's back, but now it's getting bigger and bigger, and it's starting to look like a little cyst, I think. Holly is getting a little bit nervous at, at this point, and nerves are definitely playing a role in Holly's play style. Now, well, Sky Industries, I personally, I'm, I'm but uh, mixed feelings about this map. But uh, what can you say about Volskaya? The most memorable thing about Volskaya to me, at least, was when it was absolutely huge in the Sombra meta. One of the only maps that Sombra was able to play in back when she was implemented because of the really good hacks that she could get on the two health packs right near point, which were absolutely huge. And she's still actually very prevalent with Sombra today. I really want to see Danny come out and play some Sombra on attack at least, but it seems like they're going to be opting for a bunker right now. And I have mixed feelings about bunker too. Now the bunker meta is a bit of a strange one, right? We With the Baptiste playing a critical role, the, it is frustrating at the very least to get rid of it in that uh, Bastion's only weakness is that he lacks mobility. You give him mobility and he essentially is a nightmare, regardless of where he is. Yeah, and, you know, they do pop out that sonar error. They're trying to do whatever they possibly can. And this halt hook combination with Danny is absolutely huge. You see Wisp and Risky just get mowed down. And one of the only options right now that are on the side of Holly and is Sombra, which are gonna switch to immediately because they just need EMP Danny and hope for the best. Now, taking a closer look at this team comp here, obviously it looks like they've built around the Bastion as you've got the Orisa with the shield. Obviously you've got the hooks from the Roadhog damage boost brought to you by Mercy. But you take away the Bastion and that whole comp starts to fall apart piece by piece. Are they going to be able to pressure it? I hope so, because seeing them just sit there, it is, funnily enough, a game of chess. Yeah, and you see the huge anti come off onto Danny. The immortality field tries to, you know, stop it, and they try to lament, but it's just not enough. The dive is just too powerful, and you're gonna see Bunker just fall down. They didn't even need the EMP. What great team coordination comes off on the side of Holly, which, you know, is a breath of fresh air. They're gonna be able to take the first point, and, you know, not exactly snowball, but it, it's, it's a start. Now, Allie will uh, go ahead and take that first point there. They're going to push, and hopefully, Chugger Bros is going to have an answer. They are setting up now. They're ready to go, and uh, that Sombra, if it does stay with an AMP after it's used, I'm going to be pretty excited to see what it's going to be comboed with. Here. Oh, and the six man EMP just comes in right now. We do see Wisp popcorn. They don't really stand a chance right now. It's just not looking too well right now. The dive from Risky and Ace is just a little bit too big. Even with the immortality field, you can't really do anything about just the massive monkey looming over you, dealing so much damage. It's it's just sort of disconcerting if you're on the side of, you know, Choga Bros right now, but you need to keep in in ideas that Holly, they can't sit in idle forever. This is like, this is the final point and one kill for defense is two kills for attack and they need to be doing as much damage as possible. It seems like they're having a fairly easy time getting two or three picks, but with the spin to win comp coming in, you know, se second second um, tick coming in, they're trying to do whatever they possibly can. CC ults come in. It's actually looking pretty good. I think this is gonna go all the way to last point. <laughs> in sneezing distance right now, 99.3. Be really angry if I was Holly right now. And there it is. That's going to be the point. A little bit of a of a long fight, but not as long as some contestants normally leave you. You know, wanting the fight to be five seconds long. Now, I would like to jump in here and say this illustrates an excellent point that I'd like to bring up to all of you watching. Halley has consistently, again, superior alt economy. They know how to manage their alt and push. They just need coordination, and they proved that they can do it here. They were able to get Shoka Bros off that point with the bunker composition very quickly, and it was not without teamwork. They know how to do it. They just need to follow through, and Halley has the potential to win this map. They just need to keep doing what they're doing. Mm -hmm. But now taking that 
in spinning at 180, looking at the side of Choco Bros, they should have switched off Bunker the minute they died. Just Bunker doesn't really, you know, work when the enemy Samurai has EMP, A, right. and it really just doesn't hold up on point two. And when you die with Bunker, you normally like, okay, I have to switch off right now. But they decided to hold it because they had Tonka time on them. They had Bash, they had Bastion's all, you know, I think they were close to back wall. But when when, when Bastion doesn't work the first time, you need to switch off immediately. It's like, it's not going to be like, oh, it didn't work the first time. Maybe it'll work the second time. It, sadly, Bastion, as much as I wish it did, doesn't work that way. Now we are getting ready to attack here. It looks like we're going to see Halley going to be defending this time and Chocobros will be attacking. Now, even if they do get two points, they will bring it into overtime. So it is a race against time for the Chocobros to bank as much time as possible. Yeah, and I'm surprised. Uh, you normally don't see Funk Doctor on the the uh, wh what are they? Oh, they're they're having Danny Scout right now. That was why it's, what, why they were standing in spawn, waiting to just making sure that there were no funky comps going on right there. But you do see Funk Doctor on that sweet sweet Hammond, that wrecking ball coming in, hoping to create space. But he's just gonna get almost mowed down right there, he's getting hit with all, everything. Now Heli has the offer right now, and this engagement needs to go by fast. It needs to be swift for them to hope to do anything right there. Cake Pop trying to isolate Whisper over there. The space, the the space beating, the space beating ball is gonna come in, trying to do whatever he possibly can. They're gonna get one pick, but is that going to lament into two? It seems like it isn't. As Funk Doctor is gonna be falling down on the side, and it just doesn't seem like it's gonna work out anymore. Of course, Cake Pop is trying to do whatever he possibly can. They're throwing up in, in all their damage. Almost have one tick, but they're ignoring the point to try to do whatever they possibly can to Holly. They want to take Holly out all the way before they can continue to the point and to the rest of the map. And that might be the fail decision as the bomb comes in, but it's a misplaced bomb at that, as this is going to be a lost fight on the side of Choco Bros. Now, taking a look at our alt economy here, we don't really have the self-destruct up for Holly, but even that we've seen has proven very, very valuable in denying pushes. Yeah, absolutely huge. And, you know, sort of sad to see Cake Pops, you know, EMP, not EMP, you know, self-destruct go to waste like that because we've seen Cake Pop pull an absolutely huge 3K. It doesn't seem like it's going to work out anymore, but we watch as Funk Doctor tries to create space, goes in for the barriers, cause is already out, getting booped. That's what you were saying on high ground. And now with your team, but it's, okay, there we go. Now we're seeing Choco Bros. They're able to create that space. This is the space that they needed in the first fight that they didn't really have. And you're just seeing how Funk Doctor, how Funk Doctor space just works out so well for them. As they are going to be getting the first point, and now they need to book it a second. Well, after they take this point, they still have that self destruct in the back pocket. And I'm hoping that uh, when Halley decides to use it, it's going to be very very valuable again getting it again is going to be really hard especially when you've got uh, lots of different angles of attack here so Funk Doctor going in, creating space a lot like it always does. Cake Pop diving in, trying to do a little bit more damage, hoping to just build up his self destruct because his self destruct can be absolutely huge. Ace is holding onto his self destruct. I don't know why he should have popped it right there. Popcorn able to bring it down. Risky and Dico both out of the fight, and Ace is going to pop self destruct to get Milk back, which was totally the wrong decision right there. Coming in, it's three kills to all three points three people on point they're hoping to get second tick now they're going for third tick and it just doesn't look like it's gonna do anything the boots are coming out it's since it's 99.6 once again but danny's bay play bay plating and that's gonna be point and what ah uh, they we saw hallie they had huge potential but they just threw it away right there and now that it's a another round of attack and defense Choker Bros, just a little bit less time than Halley. However, this is still up in the air. It is anyone's game. If Choker Bros do take this, I am personally not sure if we will play a fourth map. But if we do, it will be excellent all the same. Coming in. Um, what do you want to see? Do you want to see? I don't really want to see them pop Bunker one more time, but. I want to see the Sombra come out no matter what, just because of how good Sombra's backline harassment comes off. Is there any heroes that, you know, or comps that you want to see, you know, Holly or um, Choco Bros run? I just want to see them be creative. Maybe just a four DPS, just for the heck of it. 
You know, bring out a Symmetra, bring out a Torbjorn. Let me see something we don't see all the time and win with it. That would impress me, personally. Can we get the Bastion dive, please? Nah, but it seems like we are not going to be seeing that. Funk Doctor, again, they're primor they're hoping to get the dive with Funk Doctor and Cake Pop is what they're hoping to do. And that's seems to be working out pretty well for them. And let's just see how they run on this point. We don't really see any switches. Maybe Deco on, you know, Moira might be a different choice, hoping to you know, get constant damage on that far. And I know a lot of far is complaining, but like, oh my god, the more was so annoying the entire match. But this could totally be different. We look at look at Funk Doctor. He's in the back line. He's waiting to create space. I think he has his eye on Wisp right now. At least that, that's what it seems like. <laughs> uh, Funk Doctor, King's Outlaw. They're all sort of going for Wisp right now. Momenting him off. Wisp falls down a little bit lower. Getting going to get finished off by Popcorn right there. And with the other Cypher falling down, it's looking a little bit, you know, iffy on the side of Polly. Funk Doctor creating some more space, doing a lot of damage to these tanks right now. And one by one, it just seems like Holly is getting picked off. And just looking at Choker Bros, it's almost like poetry in motion. And I can almost hear them yelling in their communications. Focus, this one burned down, one hit. You know, it, you can definitely tell there is some level of communication going on, even if it's not super organized they're able to pick their target and stick to them. They are efficient as a team, and that is exactly what I like to see. Mm -hmm. And not only are they efficient, but they are extremely aggressive, and you don't, you really don't want to be going against a team that is not only aggressive, but is good mechanically, has good team synergy. Like, it just sort of seems like going up against Choco Bros is something that you don't want to do in this tournament at all, because huh, it just doesn't feel too good when you play up, up against an aggressive, you know, well-coordinated team. But coming into this next push, look at Funk. He's creating so much space right now. Popcorn getting that backline harassment. You know, Holly, they're going to try popping bongos. They want to do as much as they possibly can to stop this push in its tracks. 230, and it's looking like they're going to be able to do relatively successfully, even though we did see it just come in. We are seeing Danny pop visor right now, trying to get, you know, any scrap damage off, which could have been saved for later, but it seems like Funk Doctor and King's Outlaws alts are going to give them the ult advantage no matter what. And now we're seeing the ult economy in favor of Choco Bros this time. We've got the sound barrier and the minefield up, ready to go for that next point push, but they've got two minutes, so they're going to make it count. Yeah, you know, you can't just do a dally around this entire time, and it seems a little bit weird as Danny was sort of just standing there for a second, you know, asking to get picked off there, but it seems like he's going to be fine right now. Fung Doctor coming in, creating more space, bring down the mines, and this is where the aggression plays in. They all dive in. Popcorn taking out Risky, and that's a shield gone, so now you really have to look at where you're playing. Watch yourself, but that's exactly what Choco Bros is going to be too fast for. You don't have time to react. This ace is going to be the last one to fall down here. Even though they do have a dragon to try to cleave, the ticks are just going to be ticking by and by. Monkey's gonna try to come in, just do whatever contestant he really can. But at this point, it just seems a little bit too dangerous. Zenyatta coming in one second too late, and this is where the fight starts ticking down. And it just doesn't look good on the side of Holly. Nuke's gonna come in, doesn't really hit anyone, but with two, one, one and a half ticks and counting, it just doesn't seem too good right now. We do see the spin to win tactics coming up, but uh, the spin to win tactics really don't work at all anymore. Two ticks and counting. Deco trying to come in, but H9 is going to work out as 50, not 50, as 40 seconds in the last tick will be gotten. Four minutes on the side of Holly to try to contest that. And now it is Hallie's turn. We will see what they do. But I ask you this. Knowing what we know, and the ability of Hallie to manage their alt economy, can they steal this from the Choco Bros? Oh, it's totally possible. That a four minute push uh, to second point, it's totally possible. Hallie has proven that they know how to push, they know how to play aggressive, they know how to coordinate. They just have, you know, the, the, those jitters, you know, they're not as consistent, but they can definitely be there. So this steal can totally happen. 
And now with 30 seconds remaining, what do you make of the team comps? Do you think they need to change? Do you think they need to stay with what they have? Oh, we're asking for a pause. Great way to segue into that question. Yeah, um, honestly, the only change that I want to see on the side of Holly is, and they are, they are switched to it. You know, I would honestly be like, I say Wisp needs to do a little bit more backline harassment as much as I love the double snipers. I just personally don't think it works out too well for the teams that run it. And I've been casting Revolution for a while now. Whenever I've seen it, you know, it, it works out for a while. You know, in some cases it works out, but it just doesn't work out as consistently as it does, as these teams think it does. We're running double sniper almost every single game. But, you know, it seems like we're seeing the same thing come out from both teams again, other than Wisp on Sombra. So let's just see how, you know, this first fight goes. Okay, and now we are seeing Halley trying to attack here with the timer running out here. We're going to see just how solid that defense is on behalf of Chuckle Bros. Yeah, we do see Hammond. So Funk's job is, again, to create space. Wisp needs to stay a little bit more stealthy. Getting taken up, but the peel from Risky was amazing. That was honestly, a, that call was honestly probably one of the best things I've seen on the side of Holly tonight. You saw Sombra, Wisp was on high ground getting harassed by Cake, and then Risky heard it, came in right there. But now the fight needs to continue. Danny's gonna take out Cause, and that speed is necessary. And with it down, the dive just can't happen as fast. Raw Toe taking out Danny and Cake Pop, so they're gonna be able to regain their footing. Now, I'm loving this. You look at the focus that's coming in from Team Holly. Now they're facing, now they're focusing Ponyo, but they need to start, but they just got a little bit distracted right there. You know, they start looking at some other people and that's going to allow, that, that's going to allow Togo Bros to regain point. And the Nana Boost combo with the Dragon Blade is fantastic. It's always very satisfying when it does pull off a few kills. But again, we've got the EMP, we've got the Primal Rage online, so we're going to see what they're going to try and do to steal that point right under their noses. So we are coming into this next push, they're looking to dive. Watch Risky and how he picks the dive target. He's looking at popcorns like, that looks like some delicious snacks right there. Popcorn goes in, but doesn't expect the Tesla Cannon to zap him directly in the face. You do see a few picks off Wisp and King's Outlaw, both respectively, are going to be falling down. Danny getting another snipe off Popcorn. He's going to be able to finish off these few snipers. Danny's just looking to do some real damage right now, but Monkey just wants to deny anything that's possibly happening. He's the only team member that's still in there. Risky trying to pull some some risky maneuvers, but he's just going to end that fight right there. And with two minutes remaining, the Valkyrie has been popped. We've got a self-destruct and a minefield online. But again, Halley always somehow up in alt economy. They can definitely take this point still. They've got a minute 50. We want to see what they do here. Yeah, and I'm loving the dive, but the, they just need to start focusing down a little bit harder. Popcorn is oh, and the nano blade comes out looking for some oh pinatas, but the EMP is gonna come out as a counter right there, getting Ponyo really you know vulnerable right there. But luckily she is gonna be able to get out. But with popcorn gone, that's your main DPS, that's your main way of creating space and backline harassment. So it's not looking too good for the side of Choco Bros, even though we did see Cake. You know, they're trying to do it as they possibly can. Cake does have self-destruct right now. She does have the ability to zone the point, and that's exactly what she's going to be doing. Going for it. Oh, but it hits on the roof some a few meters too far right now. And we just, we're seeing something on the side of Choco Bros that we're not seeing on Holly, and that's coordination. Not, not coordination. We're seeing, you know, focusing down targets. That's just not happening on the side, or much on the side of Holly. It comes in, you can see that Holly coordinates in, like, they focus down one target at a time in the first half of the fight, but at the second half, it sort of like fizzles out. And they were close. We've only got one tick, but with 40 seconds remaining, I don't know. It's just that sound barrier. I don't know if it'll be enough. Yeah, 30 seconds, tick, 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 tock, that clock goes as they're looking to just go in one more time. Walking straight, everyone's just walking past Popcorn. He's gonna be able to get the free kill off onto Wisp, and that's just huge. The sniper's out, you have so much room, room to roam. Not to mention the other sniper flying on a Popcorn as well. Just the room that Chocobos has right now, they don't have to worry about anything in the world right now other than focusing down these tanks and support, and that's exactly what they're gonna do. Eight seconds, and everything's gonna, gonna go off. It just didn't seem 
like Holly's gonna be able to get on point at all in these extra seconds, and that is going to be the third map to Choco Bros. And Choco Bros with a 3-0 lead. I again, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not sure if we will be playing a map four, but if we won't, I will say Choco Bros, you have left an impression on me that I will not soon forget. Watch this, you know, Beyblade right now goes in, completely decimates, and then follows up with the bongo kill, even though it's not necessary. Just amazing, you know, placement on the side of Danny right there. Danny's probably one of my favorite um, DPSs in this league. And we will be taking a short break, ladies and gentlemen, as I am not being told. We will be stopping here, so stay tuned. And welcome back here, ladies and gentlemen. We are currently on map four of four. Choco Bros with a 3-0 lead. But we will be playing out the last map in traditional style. Welcome back. I'm your friendly color caster, Chandler Shambino, joined here 
once again by Bite May, our wonderful play-by-play caster. How you doing, Bite May? I'm doing great. And honestly, everyone in this room, in this stream, in this room, is in for a big treat. We are on Ike involved. I've only think that this map has been played twice in the total. Everyone else uses King's Row, and you know it would be a really treat if we did see blizzard world get chosen which has only ever been chosen once in the entire time you know never um revolutionary esports has been up and that's what i want i want to see i want to see the the rare picks but it seems like we're just gonna get a semi-rare pick today okay and as far as eichenwald goes for me i love this map lots of creative things to do with it you know the design of the map is really interesting overall i just enjoy the map it's it's such a good map, you know. And one of my favorite things about this map when I when I was um, playing this game as a filthy main main, as I like to call myself, um, the underpass was absolutely huge before they added in the um the little side door, which absolutely made popcorn. Well, popcorn's about to do a hell of a lot easier and a hell of a lot more devastating. But no one really used the side room either, so it doesn't really matter. because popcorn still gonna be doing so much damage right now. When when you look at popcorn. You don't look to see him get nutty um, right clicks. What you want to see him do is get really good walls. And coming in, he's going to wall off Winston, but the rest of the team is going to dive in. It, your walls don't really work when the entire team can sort of just jump over it. Then he's going to take, take Risky out. And I think that's that's going to sort of you know lead into the, how the rest of this fight is going to go. You know, as soon as your main tank's gone, it sort of doesn't follow well for you. Now, once again, we see Chocobros on the defense, doing a great job. They're, they're just poking, but uh, they're not uh, too aggressive. They're really just waiting for Halley to make the next move here. They're being very careful how they engage. Mm -hmm. And look at the switch off, um, Risky. Just immediately regretting his choice to play on Winston. Instead, opting to play on Orisa, which could definitely help out. It could definitely not help out either, because if this if this Orisa gets walled off by May, it's going to be absolutely huge, and there's going to be nothing that can really happen, and it's going to get really, really dirty from um if if we can see Popcorn perform on this May, and it seems like. Popcorn's having a, a tad bit trouble popping the walls, but the damage is coming out nonetheless, even though we do see a little seesaw battle right now. We're gonna see Blade come out. He's trying to find some people to hit. It, the Nano Blade's just so good. He's looking for some Pinatas to hit up, but no one's really there. It's, yeah, like I said, it, it, it's a teeter-tawing battle right now. You don't really know what's happening. You don't really know what's going on. He's just falling a little bit up. Both teams are gonna pop Bongo simultaneously. But nothing's really adding up. This is both teams are sort of wasting all with popcorn coming in. Dude, they're trying to go for just any hits right now. This is this is gonna be really big. Bomb comes out a little bit too high to actually do anything. We're just seeing alt pop to be alts like they're there to try to get an advantage. And Frost is going to be the one to get an advantage. Three picks on the side of Holly allowing Choco Bros to fall down. Them getting the first point and that fight took a little bit too long in my opinion now they've taken the payload here they're gonna, they're gonna hold on to it but i am a little nervous that they have that tracer on the defense tracer is a great flanker but i don't know if it is warranted here only because you have dealer you've got winston and you have genji all of them be a pain in the butt for Tracer simply because she is just a little fly trying to be swatted by it. Yeah, and we are going to be seeing Cause play a little bit aggressive right there, getting taken out by Popcorn as we see, you know, Togo Bros capitalize on the high ground. This is where I think Togo Bros definitely has the advantage right now, and they're going to play it to their utmost respect and just shut down Holly 100%. Danny taking a great positioning on high ground. And that being said, we do see the payload has been taken back by Chocobros, right? And we again, once, but not the last or the first time, Halley up in alt economy yet again. And you see the Kali has his own. They're gonna come in with the Nano Blade, going in for some pinatas right there. Frostbite looking to hit people with his bat right now. That there's one, there's two. He's looking for a third, but he's not gonna get the cash money he wants. As Popcorn is gonna say, "Sorry, but your bounce, but your check bounced right there." 
Cake Pops doing such a good job stopping this, but as they're focusing on this high ground fight, look at how Holly is st stealthily pushing that point right there. And they're gonna push it forever right now, as it seems it's taking a little long for them to engage it. As we do see King's Outlaw, he's popping back while on to top point as Frostbite's gonna come in and do some backline damage right there. A little bit of a weird, but they are going to be able to regain the point at the last turn. Two minutes, 10 seconds on the clock still. We've got the Primal Rage online, but we have the Barrage and the Self-Struck and the Deadeye. Ready for Choker Bros. I am curious to see what they're gonna do as it just barely. The payload stays away from that bridge, the infamous bridge that is so hard to push on. on it's it's cuz of that, you know, one kill for attack is two kills for defense and it's just so difficult to try to do anything you possibly can on this. We are going to see Danny opting to hold the high ground instead of jumping down cuz his dead eye is so big in the situation. He's going to pop it. Tries to go for a tank, but they're only getting risky, but risky in primal form is absolutely humongous. They are going to pop Bongo's immortality field to finish up the rest. Popping three alts to win a fight. Even, even that seems a little bit much. Now, Baptiste did receive a small buff, I do believe. It makes him a little bit more offensive. And I believe they increased his clip, if memory serves correctly. Oh yeah, it's, it's, it's just a little bit easier to trade some damage out, but he, you know, Baptiste with the bunker combination, if he were to pop his ultimate right now, I'm not really sure why he would, but it would be phenomenal on that bridge. Oh, Popcorn opting to solo alt right there, but back to the main team fight, it doesn't seem to be going well for Holly. Danny popping a dead eye right there, Kings popping a bap wall, it just melts Holly right there. And with 37 seconds on the clock, you've got two important ultimates for a team fight here. You got the sound barrier, you've got the self-destruct. I'm curious if they can use it to sweep them off point. They probably are. It's gonna be really big. I wanna see Ace get a humongous positioning onto his, his self-destruct right now. I think that's what you wanna see as well, but it's gonna come in. He's gonna pop it, but he pops it straight up instead of ailing it out. Doesn't hit anyone, but look as Danny's in the background trying to go for Frostbite right there, and the damage is a little bit too much. Hitting seven seconds, that's both DPS down. All you have is you take some healers, but that's not really what you want in the thick of it right now. It's looking like Holly could turn around, but with the ults are just coming off all the way on the side of Struggle Bros. They want to end this fight, and they want to end it now. Overtime to get down. Danny's trying to get back on, but not fast enough, as that is going to be round one complete. All they have to do is push to the bridge, and that's not that far. And now as they switch sides, we're going to see just how effective their team comp works on a map that has lots of choke points. Very frustrating if you do not play around them correctly. Yeah, these choke points are absolutely massive, but you know what I think we will be seeing out from the side of Choco Bros is the backline Farah push, you know, coming off on this little edge and creeping up just to harass backline. I do have to ask you, while we're waiting for their teams, what do you think is the most important thing that each team needs to do to win Ready this to next battle. map? Well, from the side of Holly, you know, defending is a little bit different than, than attacking, but when they have that advantage, when they have that, you know, at least like one or two, two pick advantage right there, they need to go in and they need to focus. That's what I see, you know, they need to play a tad a bit more aggressive, you know, when, when they're up and they, they need, need to focus. I see them focus all the time, but they just don't seem to focus when it really matters. And Choco Bros, they need to watch their alts. They can't be just popping it whenever they feel like it. They need to, you know, be careful and just a little bit more strategic about, you know, where their alt placements and how they synergize. Well said. And without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get started. Bite me. Take it away. So here, so I, it's not, not going the way I thought it was. Popcorn, instead of going for the backline harassment, is going for more of a frontal shield break type of deal. But watch Rotos. He's on the Doomfist, and he just comes up behind, taking out King's Outlaw. And that's absolutely huge. I 
it's it's weird to see that Rotos has the ability to jump up and do so much damage, because Rotos' ability is you know it's a punch. He's going there for the fast picks, and that's exactly what they need with Frostbite able to be finishing up with mopping it out. It just seems like Chocobo is gonna have a little bit of a hard time pushing. Now, if we take a look at this choke point, it is one of the worst choke points in the game simply because you really can't afford to go through the side without being susceptible to lots of different AoEs, say a junk rat or things like that. The important thing is forcing them onto the point of defense. As soon as you do that, it's so much easier to attack. And here comes a tag that you're talking about. You know, you do have to deal with a lot of AoE. But the hope that Funk Doctor creates space is really what is propelling Choco Bros to try to continue these fights right now. But Cake Pop is going to be down. That's one of your main tanks out of there. Pop wins a Pop of Risky, all taken down by Frostbite. But Cause is going to be able to exact his revenge however he wants. And that was a really risky ult. Minefield's going to be Pop to try to create a tad bit more space. And Danny is going to be able to secure that point. Danny gets going in there, getting an absolute huge bomb is going to allow Choco Bros to get this first point. And this is looking a really risky for Holly right now. And now, 4 minutes, 39 seconds on the clock. I would like to see them just push it just a little bit more. I want to see them evolve a little bit more as a team, but in reality, Haley, Haley, we're really going to be specific here. I want them to use their ultimates just like they have been the entire time. I just want them to be more effective in the way to coordinate. They have the ability to force them off that table. just need to see that coordination click together. Yeah, <laughs> look at Frostbite. He's going for, he's trying to go for Pano, a Frostbite, a Popcorn, Danny, whoever he possibly can get his hands on, but it's just, he just can't find them exactly. Danny's actually going to be able to get Frostbite out at a place of irony right there. It's luckily enough for, for Holly right now, the Bongos and the Ground Beef is going to be enough for them to hold this point. Though with Cake Pop in case, it seems like this might be doing a complete 180 as we are so close to the spawn of Choco Bros right now that they can, even even though they have a death, they can just have Funk come in, create space, and now they can continue their extremely aggressive behaviors with Rotos trying to deny them this aggressive behaviors by playing aggressive himself. But Rotos, in order to do that, needs to be able to hit those fists. And it just seems like while he's hitting them, he's not hitting enough of them fast enough. And leading to a sort of teeter-totter fight, which we do see a lot of the times on Eichenwald, on other, you know, escort maps, it seems to be happening a lot nowadays. But the ultimate advantage on both sides is relatively even. Popcorn just wanting to get rid of cause in the back, like, because it's just a little too much of an annoyance right there. And it seems like this annoyance is actually working out perfectly fine for them. Raw Toast, Frostbite, they're able to lament themselves, they're able to cement themselves in on this defense, and they're wasting so much time on the side of Choco Bros. With 2 minutes 35 seconds on the clock, again, Ali has proven to have, once more, another superior ult economy. They just need to hold out a little bit longer. Those 2 minutes. So much can change. Yeah, and there's Blade coming in, going for some more damage, but Popcorn to be able to take Frostbite out. Danny trying to just play extremely aggressive. I, that's what you want to be seeing from Danny, but it gives me a heart attack whenever I see Raw Toast be in there and playing extremely aggressive. I think he's going to get, like, stunned any second, but he seems to be really on top of, you know, at least going for the stun characters first and then continuing out. Raw Toast going to pick off right there. And the, honestly, <laughs> third pick off right there. Holly is sort of using um, Raw Toast's Doomfist as a crutch for these fights. He's not letting anyone get in. Like, he's not letting all six players get in for a single fight. And the defense on Halley really just is, it's solid. I mean, they've got a great team comp. You know, you've got the back line doing their job just as they're supposed to. You've got Doomfist trying to clean up some kills. Coalesce is coming out and the power turn here. And even though Triple Bros is still pushing very slowly, the defense is very effective, I would say. But with Popcorn getting a triple kill right there, and Danny going to be able to secure one of himself. They're, and with, they're going to be able to win the cart. 
Plus, with the extremely aggressive playstyle that Choco Bros is known for, they're gonna be able to get there really quickly. Ace trying to defend the point with whatever he got, but getting d it just doesn't bode too well to your defense right there. They're gonna go in, popping Coalescence, and this just doesn't look too well on the side of on the side of Choco. Holly, sorry, Holly, right now is Danny and Panyo are both going to be able to secure a few kills. The tick even, the point even though the time is ticking down, the spin to win comps are coming out. It doesn't look too good. And whenever you see spin to win come out on either side, it's like, oh, well, it's, the spin to win is the last defense. That's what you hope to do when everything goes wrong. But with uh, cause coming on point and taking cake pop out, it's looking like it might work out right now. As the excitement unfolds, we hit 15 seconds. Popcorn gonna be able to get a pick of his own and now the blood is really starting to boil on both these teams. It is now or never. Both either team winning this fight will dictate the side of this game and it does seem like it is pointing on the side of Togo Bros right now. Space being created as well. Funk Doctor doing a great space job and that is gonna be Togo Bros taking up the fourth and final map saying that nope you're not gonna get a single win on us and with our final play of the game brought to you by danny as mccree dead eye has been popped how many kills is he gonna get here a single okay but then he gets the mech with a double and then a third kill all your money well done great plays from both teams you know just looking over the game what do you think was the defining reason why choco bros was able to dominate um these maps i'm just gonna have to say superior coordination and communication i am more than impressed by their sportsmanship and i do look forward to seeing more of them in the future anyway do you have any last words before we sign off childish I would just like to say thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, for having me as your personal color caster and bite me. As always, it's a pleasure seeing a play-by-play -play cast with so much energy and passion. It is inspiring, sir. Thank you very much. It is always a pleasure to cast with you, but we are not the only ones in this caster booth as I will now reveal the mysterious Lethal. Mr. Lethal, why don't you give us a quick hi before we sign out? How's it going? They can hear me. I already fixed the problem. For some reason, oh, the mic input one does not like my mic, but if I just sit on mic input two, it works. Go figure. Oh, okay. Technology, you gotta love it. Yeah. Anyway, that has been, this has been a revolutionary Overwatch, you know, production. Choco Bros going for Holly. Sadly, you know, even though they did play well, they were sort of left in the dust right there. And, you know, that's about it. Thank you guys for watching so much. You feel free to join us if you guys want to join the tournament, a revolutionary Overwatch. So just feel free to join. And with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, take care, stay classy, and most of all, keep improving. That is the spirit of the game. We will see you all next time.